Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Harris. I'm medical director for Restore. I do hair restoration. I've been doing this for 25 years. Today, we're gonna to be looking at some videos about Joe Rogan, and I'll be giving you my comments. Joe Rogan is a comedian, actor, podcast host, and he's had some very definite opinions about his own hair and his experience in hair restoration. He's talked to guests about it, and we're gonna be looking at his videos right now. Well, I, I had a hair transplant. That was the dumbest thing I've ever done. That's One uh, of the David Feldman, things. that's what he did. I have a giant scar on the back of my head. It looks like a smile. I wonder if that's it's his like joke. A piece of meat. My yeah, joke. No, you get like a scar from it. So Joe Rogan is explaining that he had a hair transplant and he's uh, lamenting the fact that he has a big scar in the back of his head that looks like a large smile. He also mentions that it's uh, one of the worst decisions he's ever made. The scar is due to the process that he used for his hair restoration and that was the FUT or strip harvest method. That method absolutely does leave a linear scar. And one of the things you don't want to do after you've had that type of procedure is shave your head because it's very visible. Just listening to Joe's experience and, and him talking about uh, being the worst process and the worst outcome of his life and something he regrets doing, perhaps he should have spent a little more time doing research, maybe talk to the doctor or about what the possible outcomes are of having this type of procedure done on his head. Maybe he wasn't the right candidate to have this procedure. It sounds like he didn't have enough information. Uh, he's not thrilled with the outcome. It sounds like right now he's talking about the scar. We don't know how the actual transplant turned out. In my mind, it sounds like he's very disappointed with the current outcome and um, probably if he had to do it all over again, he wouldn't. Yeah. My joke was that it's like taking people from uh, a town where everybody's healthy and moving them into a town where everybody's dying. <laughs> <laughs> the only ones that were left were like the new recruits. <laughs> like the, the hair that was supposed to be up there, like it was already falling out. Yeah. So where do you get it from? Like other They parts? take it from the back of your head. They take a strip off oh. the back of your head. Now the way they do it, in a lot of places they do it differently, they do one individual follicle at a time. Yeah. So we'll talk about a couple different uh, comments that he made. He is accurately describing the difference between the FUT or strip harvest method that leaves the linear scar. And he's also describing the methodology of FUE or follicular unit excision, where we remove the grafts one at a time from the donor area. Somewhat less invasive does not leave a linear scar, whereas the strip method, a little bit more invasive, we remove more tissue, but there's no way to get around having the scar. He's also describing the process where we're moving hair from where it grows fine to where it doesn't. That's the whole process of a hair transplant. We're putting them in areas where the hair is miniaturizing or is completely disappeared to restore the hair density in that area. Now, the fact is we can't restore it like he might have had hair back in, you know, when he was a teenager, but the process that we have now, we can create very good density in the bald areas. So he accurately describes what the process is. It just sounds like it wasn't the right thing for him to do. I just was scared that I was going bald. I was like, what can you do? And they tell you they can fix it. They're like, oh, great. I'll just get it fixed. But it doesn't really fix it. No. Well, how come? Because that, uh, what's his name? Joel McHale from yeah. the suit. Because I remember him from those Burger King commercials where he had less hair than I do. Mm. And then all, now he's got Dragon Ball Z hair. <laughs> so Joe is talking about some limitations of hair restoration. I've touched on this in other videos that we can't recreate the density that you had when you were you know, a teenager. And maybe the surgeon, the clinic he went to didn't describe that process accurately to him. Because in fact, many people don't necessarily want or have to or need to go back to what they look like when they were 12 years old. I think there was some misinformation that he, he probably obtained and he's very vocal about expressing uh, his dissatisfaction with it. You know, I think uh, if, if patients go see the right doctor and they have uh, the information they need in hand, they can make an accurate decision whether or not they want to go through with the process. His co-host there, or is the person he's talking to, brings up a, a, another individual that has a hair transplant surgery that seems to have amazing results. It's hard to dissect out because we don't know anything about the surgeon. We don't know what he looked like after the process and the procedure, the change in density. He could just be one of these people that, uh, you know, needed to have hair like he had when he was 12 years old and as an adult didn't achieve that and therefore is very unhappy. Let's see what else they have to say. Yeah, it's like real else? thick. It's almost like more thick than they start with sometimes. Did he have a killer transplant or is that just He's a good got a great head of hair, man. He could no, have. He didn't if Burger people King commercial. have thicker hair, it works better. Every bald guy's f hair. <laughs> every celebrity is like, who suddenly has more hair, I remember. People with uh, thick hair follicles can get away with it. Like my hair would have looked way better, but I have thin hair. The, th oh. the hairs themselves are thin. So if someone has thick hair, they could pr they could have some pretty dramatic result if it's the right kind of thinning. What age did you do it? Thirty? No, not even. Oh, not really? Even thirty? Yeah. But what you do you tell under thirty when you did? Yeah. Let's talk about his decision to have the hair transplant at thirty. That's not inappropriate or wrong to to do. He does describe though that one of the limitations of his hair is that it's thinner in caliber, finer hair. And what he says is absolutely true: is that if you have very fine caliber hair, it is 
difficult, more difficult to create high density. But again, if you understand that going in, people with fine hair understand the limitations of their fine hair, and many are willing to undergo a hair transplant to have a thicker head of hair than they do currently. So it's it's not an absolute contraindication to having surgery. It's just that you have to understand the limitations. He brings up the fact that he was 30. You know, I, I do plenty of surgery on patients in their you know the late 20s and 30s. That itself is not really a limiting factor, but you have to be careful that you know you counsel the patients appropriately. And actually, what it's sounding like is he didn't really understand what he was getting into, and that's the fault of the clinic and the physician. Let's see what else he says. I was 28. I was, I just started acting on TV and I was panicking because my hair was yeah. like seriously falling out. And I was like, this is going quick. Yeah. And, and I was like, well, where's it going to go? And um, <laughs> like, you just get thicker pubes. Well, I was like, I was, I knew that part of the reason why I was making money was the way I looked. I, I mean, I, I, I was doing stand up and I was acting in these shows but I wasn't an ugly dude. So he brings up a couple of points here that, that I think we should talk about is that a lot of people don't like the way they appear. And especially if you're in a profession where you're out in front of people and you rely on your looks and your appearance, that can be very devastating for some people. And they get a kind of desperation about what am I gonna do? It sounds like he made a, a rash decision, didn't have all the information, and that leads to angry patients. If the clinic and doctor that you might wanna visit and get information from is forthcoming about the process, the limitations, not only with the process itself, but the density, your native hair characteristics. If you have all the information, it gives you a baseline to decide whether or not you want to have a hair restoration procedure. What he hasn't mentioned, he was experiencing hair loss in his 20s. Did they start off with medications, finasteride and minoxidil? Those are two things that anybody with hair loss should be considering and, and almost absolutely should be on it, especially if you're in your 20s, early 30s, to augment the whole process itself. In other words, it strengthens all the hair on your head. And even though you have fine hair, it might respond to the medications and give you a better result for a transplant. In addition to that, it helps you keep the hair you have. In other words, he noticed that he was thinning on the top of his head. He was worried how it looked on camera. That should have been one of the first steps, and he hasn't mentioned medication yet. So let's go on. It right. helped. You know, like I was getting certain kind of roles, like boyfriend roles. It's like something those. that a chick has to go through. Yeah, you panic because you're like, well, this is how I'm making money, and I never made any money before. So all of a sudden, oh, wow. I yeah. went from being completely broke and being a super struggling comic. Like if I got lucky, I was making 300 a week. 350 a week was a big week. Why is that bad? You know? Is that bad for a week? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect if you're a 25-year-old guy, which right. is what I was, trying to make it as a comic. Right. Then I went from that to making piles of yeah. TV money. And you're like, how do I not I'm go like, back? I am not getting rid of this. I yeah. gotta figure out a way right. to keep this rolling. I'll just toss something out here. We never tell patients that a hair transplant or having more hair is gonna change their lives. It's not uncommon though that I see a patient 10, 12 months after a procedure and they actually do say, this has changed my life. And I think a lot of people that are losing what they feel is part of their, their characteristic, their, who they are, which is their hair, you start to lose it, you panic. So he was going through a process where he was, you know, a, a poor comedian, then he's, he gets on TV and makes a lot of money, that's even a, a higher inducement to be worried about your hair loss. And that in itself will make people make decisions that may not be best for them. And it sounds like he got into that unfortunate process. But if I should have just shaved my head, I just didn't know. I didn't <laughs> know the right. freedom. The freedom. It gets, I, even if I grew like a thick head of hair, I guarantee you I'd still shave my head. I don't want to go to a barber. I had a really nice lady who used to cut my hair too. I loved her. She's fun. She had fun Dude. conversations. But I'd have to go to her place and just have to come in no, no dude, like, i wake up every four days like a wah, 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 what'd you remind me of dude wah. um so let's talk about his final comments you know i think you know his decision to shave it all off and how he says there's less you know maintenance with that i'm not sure i i have a lot of patients that shave their heads and that involves a lot of work as well i think the bottom line for joe rogan is that he wasn't thrilled with the outcome of the surgery i don't think he was counseled properly i think he made a rash decision and i think there's a little bit of rationalization here you know that he likes being bald better. I think that in hindsight, you know, he may have made a different decision if he had all the information, but he certainly is not a proponent of hair restoration surgery at this time. So everybody has their own opinions. If you don't want to go down the road that Joe Rogan did and you want to make a decision on the facts about your hair, the facts about hair restoration surgery and the medical treatments for hair loss, I suggest that you get the information you need. If you're interested, go to RestoreHair.com. There's other resources like the International Society of Hair Restoration Surgery, ISHRS.org. Give us a call if you'd like a consultation and we'll get you in and give you the information you need to make the right decision about your hair. If you like this video, like, subscribe, or comment on this video. Let us know what you think. Thank you.